Welcome to Rolling Wheels Raceway in Elbridge, New York. My name is Doug Logan. This has been a very, very busy day for these dirt modified drivers. 50 miles of racing during the day at the Moody Mile of Syracuse. Then a 91 lapper run earlier this evening in the twilight. But now on Prime Network, you get a chance to see these dirt drivers in action in their element on a half mile dirt oval at night. This is what these drivers experience 75% of their racing season. Paul Small is with our pole sitter, Doug Hoffman. Doug, the 100 lap modified feature is a tradition in stock car racing. However, it's not so traditional when this event follows a 50 mile event and a 91 lap feature event. Now, Doug Hoffman has a decided advantage tonight because, Doug, you are starting on the pole because you won the 50 mile event earlier on today. That's got to give you a very good feeling. Well, it takes a lot of pressure off because we don't have to qualify in a heat race, plus it gives us more time to prepare the car after running that 91 lap event. The car felt real good in the early race. We had some tire problems that took us out, but uh, I, think I think if we pick the right tires, we're going to be in good shape. Now, most everybody would be asking how the car is. How do you feel? I feel great. You know, the 50-mile event at the fairgrounds went real well. We had a good starting spot. And the crew did a super job, and the car ran good all day. So, you know, we won that, and we came here, and we, we took the lead in the 91-lap event, and the car felt great to, tonight here. And uh, we had some tire problems, like I said, and that took us out of the event. But... Uh, We'll put new tires on, put the right tires on, and I think we're going to be in good shape. Doug Hoffman starts on the pole for tonight's Robert M. Petrocci Memorial. Our pit reporter, Andy Fusco, is with another legendary nighttime dirt warrior who starts on the outside pole. It's dirt track racing all right, Paul, and these dents and the dirt on the side of Bob McCready's number nine, kind of a red badge of courage here on the dirt track. McCready starts outside pole for tonight's Robert Petrosi 100. What's the game plan for the 100 lapper? Well, the first 30 or 40 laps, you, you just try to size up the guys, see how the car feels, see if you've got the right tire and gear in it, and if everything's good later on, you, you really go and race. Is 100 laps an endurance race? Well, Andy, we've already run a few races today, so it's turning into quite an endurance race today. Uh, hopefully, everybody's going to finish it, and we'll have a real good show. It's been a long day for the guys in the dirt circuit, but it's just starting. We'll be back to Rolling Wheels on Prime Network right after this. Welcome back to Rolling Wheels Raceway and the Robert N. Petrocci Memorial 100 Lapper on Prime Network. I'm Doug Logan along with Paul Small. 72 degrees, a perfect night for racing, absolutely no chance of rain. And let's meet the competitors for this 100 lap event. Doug Hoffman, first row pole in the Phelps Cement Phil Chevrolet number one at Coors Extra Gold. Barefoot Bob McCready in the Apple House Syracuse frame JG Turner Construction number nine. Mike Ricky is a surprise starting third with the Duchess Overhead Doors number 87. Outside the second row, the Franklin Flyer, Billy Decker with the Wheels Discount Auto number 91. Watch Hurricane Steve Payne out of row three in the Janelle Corporation 7X. And outside him, it's Brent the Jet Hearn in the Freightliner Trucks of Newburgh number six. A rookie start fourth row inside it's Chris Burley with the guy construction number 88 car and starting in the eighth slot outside of him Dr. J Danny Johnson in the Finger Lakes 28 on to row number five Jeff Hetzler in the Smith Brothers construction number 74 and keep an eye on Mitch Gibbs in the 2G that's the skips used car entry row six Mike Colston and Joe Plazic in the seventh row it's Jeff Trombley and Gil T Row 8, Kurt Van Pelt and Pat Ward, followed by Kenny Tremont and Butch Tittle. Row 10, Walt Mitchell and Marty Knoll, and it's Ted Lamb Jr. and Howie Finch. Row 12, Sean George and Alan Johnson Jr. in the 25J. This is a pickup ride from Howie Finch, a small block car in a big block event. Then it's Donnie McGinnis and John Ventura. Row 14, Jimmy Chester and Tom Perego. Row 15, Frank Cozy and John St. Germain. Paul, what do you look for at the opening run? In the opening laps, it's pretty much going to be a sorting out of the field. Everybody's going to be looking for a lane on this dry racetrack. And we're underway with the 100-lap event from Rolling Wheels Raceway. And taking the lead immediately, Barefoot Bob McCready. And we're watching Brett Hurt. Hurt tipped to the outside over in turns one and two. It looks like he may follow that groove here in the opening laps. Hurt trying the outside on Billy Decker. Can't get by him. And Decker makes a strong move into second place. Doug Hoffman riding back there in the number three position. Looks like he might be holding back 
waiting for the front cars to sort out and then make a move towards the front. So Hearn, who started sixth, is now moving into third position, dipping low on Doug Hoffman. Looks like Hearn's car is set up very loose. That allows him to put the car anywhere on the racetrack he wants to go, determine where the fast lane is, and go from there. Meanwhile, how does Hoffman look to you? Hoffman, so far, not too bad. Looks like he's falling back just a little bit, though. It may be a hard compound tire that Hoffman is running. It takes a few laps for that tire temperature to come up and the tires to get sticky. Hearn on the outside. Does he have Decker? Yes, he does. And now he's zeroing in on barefoot Bob McCready. Going down into 3-4. Looks like McCready wants to keep the low lane. He drifts up, and that's all Hearn needs. Coming off turn number four, Brett Hearn takes over the number one spot very early in the race. And the fast track looked to be the outside groove for Brett Hearn. Three laps down, Hurt is in the number one spot. McCready runs number two. Billy Decker behind him. The field is starting to string out a little bit. There's Hurt all alone now on the back straightaway. Starting to pull out. We go back to a battle for sixth spot, Doug. And now we know very, very well why Brett Hearn always has a big smile on his face when he shows up to Rolling Wheels Raceway. He loves this track. And what a battle we have here. Doug, this is the battle for the number six position. Steve Payne going up to the outside. Dr. J. Danny Johnson going down to the inside. Caution flag is up. We've got a spin over in turn number three, Doug. Looks like Frank Cozy and Howie Finch got tangled together. Cozy trying to make a move in the early stages of this race. He should have started sixth and instead started in the 29th position due to some problems in the pits. As the yellow flag flies, caution laps do count. Doug, very important. Cozy made it out of the incident ahead of the field. He will stay on the lead lap. Looking at the replay, we see Don McGinnis on the outside. The car involved in the middle there is Howie Finch. Finch gets right up over the top of Cozy's front end. Cozy has nowhere to go but backwards. The dirt spotlight falls on Frank Cozy. And we'll be back with more of the Robert N. Petrocci Memorial 100 Lapper on Prime Network right after this. We're five laps complete on the Robert M. Petrocci Memorial 100 Lapper on Prime Network, and we have a double file restart with Brett Hearn and Bob McCready making up the first row. Then it's Billy Decker and Doug Hoffman, Mike Ricky, and Danny Johnson, the top six. And the flagger pointing out to Hearn and McCready on the front row. They will get a restart in turn number three. Watch Hearn. He's stuck on the inside. McCready is on the outside. It's kind of a flip-flop. You think Hearn will want to be on the outside on the restart. But Brett Hearn gets the good jump, and he's first to take the green flag. Bob McCready in second, then it's Billy Decker and Doug Hoffman. And it looks like Danny Johnson wants to make a move into that number five spot coming into turn number one. Johnson hooks up in the middle groove of the racetrack, not a place you would expect anybody to run. Ricky makes a move underneath. He's got Danny once again. And going down into turn number one, Billy Decker might just have barefoot Bob McCready for the second position, but no, McCready holds on. Interesting story, Doug, about the nickname Barefoot. Bob got it from the fact that a few years ago when he went to climb into a modified, he couldn't fit in the cockpit, so he had to take his shoes off to get in. Hence the nickname Barefoot. And he currently runs in second place on the racetrack. He finished second earlier today at the fairgrounds in the 50 lapper and also placed second in the 91 lap event that was held earlier this evening. And it looks like Billy Decker is dropping back just a little bit now to save his tires rather than make a run at the lead too early. Now let's go back to a battle for 15th position. The lime green number 25J is Alan Johnson. And Johnson's small block car, the car that he is running tonight, might give him an advantage. The track is very slick, and the power from a small block motor is a lot more manageable on a slick racetrack than the power from a big block motor. Trying to move in on Butch Tittle. Also in the pack is Sean George in the number 15. Now moving down into the third turn. It looks like Allen's going to make the move on Tittle. Here's Andy Fusco with the story on Allen Johnson and his borrowed ride. Allen Johnson, what's wrong with the 14J? Uh, the, the rear end went out of it, and uh, it's something we can't get fixed. Are you done for the night? No, I guess uh, I'm going to go over and talk to Howie Finch, and I guess i got to ride in a small block car. How did that come about, getting in the 25? Well, uh, through a friend, through a friend, that, uh, friend of mine that, that knows him. Allen started 24th. He's up to 15th for the latest. Here's Andy. Okay, guys, here's the word with Allen Johnson. He's radioed into his crew, and he said the 25 car feels very good. Originally, he was just going to ride around for points, but now he's going to try to go to the front. Now, the 25 has a small block motor, which could be an advantage tonight because of the hard, dry, slick conditions. 
moving down into turn number one. Mike Ricky seems to like those hard and slick conditions. He doesn't run this racetrack very often, Doug, but he seems to be doing something right with his setup. He's going by the Coors Extra Gold number one of Doug Hoffman. Meanwhile, Doug Hoffman is a man who started on the pole for this 100 lap event, and he seems to be fading a bit. Yeah, it looks like Doug may have a problem with not tire compound, but side bite. The amount of bite on the edge of the tread as the car slides sideways to the corners may not be to his liking. He's got all the straightaway speed in the losing everything in the corners. So Mike Recchi then running fourth. He started third at the beginning of the race, and he's hanging in there very, very well. And moving back a couple of spots here, this is a battle for the number six and seven position between Danny Johnson and Jeff Hitzler's number 74. Danny fading back is maybe the same problem as Hoffman has. May not have picked the right setup for the beginning of the race. And for eighth and ninth, this is Mike Colston and Steve Payne battling it out. But back to Danny Johnson. And the point of note here, both the 74 of Hetzler and the 51 of Colston are Ford-powered cars. They're kind of an aberration, if you will, in the world of motorsports. Not too many dirt track modifieds powered by Ford power. These cars don't have to pit during this race, but should they have to leave the track? Pit location strategy is a factor. And he has Billy Taylor. Billy Taylor, Bob McCready's crew has chosen to pit on the infield for the 100 lapper, but you're staying outside of turn number one. Why? Because I think it's quicker. Uh, we can, uh, once you pick the pace car up, you can duck in, and uh, we, we're going to pit right close to the entrance, and we can run right back out. Isn't it easier to lose a lap in here outside of turn number one? If you don't hit it right, uh, you can lose a lap, but I think that uh, you can lose the same amount of time getting into pits in, uh, in the infield. Two of our front runners, McCready and Hoffman, have chosen two different styles of pitting in about 80 more laps. We'll know who's right. And it appears right now that Doug Hoffman is making some strategy changes on the racetrack. Notice Hoffman now as he comes into turn number three. Looks like he's running a higher groove. He's putting the right rear tire up on that rim of loose dirt called the cushion. He's allowing that to help him turn the car and try to make it a little faster around the racetrack. This is a battle once again for six, seven, and eight. Look at Mike Colston make a move. Colston's a bit of a dark horse. We don't see him here at Rolling Wheels too often, but when he does come here, he does very well. There he's passing his Ford teammate, Jeff Hetzler. And now working on Danny Johnson for sixth place. Going down into turn number three. Looks like both these drivers are content to kind of sit right where they are right now. Although Colston's starting to come up, it might be that Danny's slowing down a little bit. Everybody's having tire problems up here in the front of the pack. Meanwhile, at the front of the pack, it's Brett Hearn, and now he's encompassing a little bit of slower traffic. And by the interval there, you can see that Hearn has jumped out to quite a bit of a big lead. And we have a caution on the speedway. Apparently, debris on the racetrack has brought out a yellow. And so we have a chance to take a break from the Robert N. Petrocci Memorial 100 Lapper on Prime Network. We'll be back after this. One quarter of the race is complete, and the leader continues to be Brett Hearn as we get set for the restart. And the rest of the top five has maintained their positions. McCready second, Decker third, Hoffman fourth, Mike Ricky in fifth, and there's Danny Johnson still trying to break the top five in the 28J. And on the restart, look at Billy Decker trying to get inside barefoot Bob McCready. And McCready trying to hold that inside lane. McCready's been trying to run the bottom the whole race long, but this time, Ducky may not be able to hold on to it. And Decker goes flying down low in turn three. Does he have Bob McCready in turn four? It looks like he just may. Looks like McCready just blinks. Look right out of the groove. That inside groove is getting slicker and slicker. McCready may be forced to jump up to the outside like Doug Hoffman, who's now making a move on McCready in turn number two. Also right in the hunt, Mike Ricky. But Decker has put some distance between he and Bob McCready as Hoffman goes from the outside on barefoot Bob. And this is a real power move and a tire test on turn number four. Hoffman's got them both, and he's got McCready for that number three spot. Great racing on the course for third and fourth between Bob McCready and Doug Hoffman. And Mike Ricky sitting back there in fifth is just, I think, finding his time, waiting to move up further towards the front as the race progresses. Well, it's a long evening here at Rolling Wheels. And at the present time, it's Brett Hearn making a very short night for himself. And Hearn has been very comfortable out at the front of the pack. He's not really pushing the car too hard right now. He's got a big lead, and he knows it. And he had to encounter some lap traffic just briefly, but handled that well before the latest yellow. And now we continue to follow 
A.J. Slideway's excellent adventure, Doug. Yes, and he's knocking on the door for a top 10 spot. He's moving up past Mitch Gibbs. Gibbs started in the number 10 position and has pretty much stayed where he is for most of the race. Next on tap for A.J. is the number 74, Jeff Hetzler. We've got a problem, though, going into turn number three. Yes, that is the black 28. Danny Johnson is off the racetrack, and the yellow flag is up, Doug. And a terrible, terrible turn of events for Danny Johnson. Danny's car has come to a stop on the front straightaway as the yellow flag flies. Most likely, Danny is going to go down at least one lap. A terrible break for him, the track champion at the Ontario County Fairgrounds, Canandaigua Speedway earlier this year. Just a bad break for Danny Johnson. All right, well, the top 10 right now as we get set to restart. Brett Hearn and Billy Decker, then it's Doug Hoffman and Bob McCready, Mike Ricky and Mike Colston, the top six. Then it's Frank Cozy. Steve Payne, Jeff Hetzler, and A.J. Slideways. And what a drive for Alan Johnson in a car he's never even been in before. He's come up all the way through the field to 10th, but somebody else has passed him after an earlier race spin and moved their way into the top 10. Here's Andy with the details. A man on the move is the number 72, Frank Cozy. He started dead last because he had trouble with the car at the start, and now he's all the way up to 7th position. Cozy's been making a lot of money up in Canada the last couple weeks. One week ago, he won a big race in Ontario. One night ago, he won a big race in Quebec. Tonight, he wants a big paycheck at Rolling Wheels. And remember, it was Frank Cozy involved in that spin on lap five with Howie Finch, and he survived it, stayed in the same lap, and he's right in the hunt. And Cozy, like Doug Hoffman and a couple of other drivers, is up on that top group. Looks like that's the fast lane around the racetrack. We've got a green flag. We're back underway, Doug. And once again, it's Brett Hurd who jumps out of the lead. Billy Decker and Doug Hoffman battling for second and third. And it looks like Decker is going to have the second spot. And here's Mike Colston on the outside. And Cozy is trying to go outside of him. Cozy is right up on the top of the racetrack. Proof positive there are about three or four racing lanes on this racetrack tonight, Doug. You know, Cozy always seems to be fast but so often seems to encounter misfortune. That's true. At the Northeast Showdown earlier this year, Cozy was running in the top three, challenging for the lead, when all of a sudden, the motor went away on his car. Cozy making a strong bid on Mike Ricky right now. And now Cozy, right up on the outside groove, goes up into the top five for the first time this evening. Cozy into the number five position with a great outside move on Mike Rickey. And an extraordinary run. He may be the fastest man on the track right now as he tries to dial in Doug Hoffman and Bob McCready. It's been a tough year for Cozy in the ADAP Auto Palace crew, but looks like he might be able to make things just a little bit better with the win tonight here at the wheel. He's coming up on the barefooted one, Bob McCready. Incredibly enough, in about 30 laps, Cozy has gone from dead last to fifth place on this race course. Now going down the back straightaway, Cozy has got his sights set on the McCready number nine. McCready still staying on the low side. There's Hoffman still on the top roof as they come down off turn number four. Hoffman making a move on McCready down the front stretch. And once again, as we take a look on the racetrack, we see tremendous battles for position from third place on back. And Brett Hearn, meanwhile, is running along smoothly up front with quite a big lead. And Decker in second place. Now McCready continues to have third place with Doug Hoffman on the outside in fourth. And now Cozy coming down the front straightaway, coming up. Oh, gets into the back end of Hoffman. A little bump and gun strategy there by Cozy. Or maybe, Doug, there's a problem with Hoffman's car. As Cozy comes off turn number two, yes, apparently a problem with Hoffman is Cozy is just pulling away from him. And so Doug Hoffman, who finished first earlier today at the New York State Fairgrounds, is encountering trouble. And here's Ricky now coming down to the inside. Hoffman is off the pace. Alan Johnson moving by. Yellow flag is not coming out. Hoffman's car slowing. He is headed for the pits, Doug. And as Hoffman leaves the racetrack, the green flag continues to fly. And there's Brett Hearn. He has passed the number A car of Tom Perigo. He was ironically last year's Rookie of the Year in the Dirt Modified standings. Well, how about Billy Decker? He's hanging in there with a strong second place showing thus far. 
Billy's doing more than hanging in there, Doug. Billy is closing the gap on Brett Hearn. And while Decker is moving up, Hoffman is moving out of the quarter's extra goal number one. A win and two DNFs on the day for Doug. We'll be back with more on Prime Network right after this. We're still under green and nearing the midway point of the Robert M. Petrosi Memorial 100 lapper on Prime Network. And Brett Hearn continues to lead the way. Look at how close Billy Decker is getting to Hearn. Decker is setting a conservative pace, however, at the same time that he's moving up. He's not really pushing the car all that hard. I wonder if he's saving it at the end of the race. Hearn and Decker just motored by Gil Teague. He's a rookie out of Canandaigua, still a teenager attending school at St. Bonaventure University. And it's back to the number five spot. Look at the line green, number 25. That's A.J. Slideways, Alan Johnson. Alan, pacing himself, has just been picking cars off steadily every couple of laps, not in a big hurry to get to the front. He knows it's a 100-lap race, and there's still about half the race left for him to get up there. The white car of Mike Rickey and the line green of Alan Johnson, the battle on the race course. Boy, Alan getting awfully close to the outside rim of the racetrack there. Makes the outside pass on Rickey coming off turn number four. And so Alan Johnson continues his charge as we go back up front, and Decker is gaining ground on Hearn, who's in traffic. And as a matter of fact, Decker has caught Hearn in traffic. Things could get really interesting here. There's Hearn on the outside of Don McGinnis coming off the corner. Hearn puts the car up on the outside, puts the hammer down, down the front straightaway. He looks like he has gotten rid of the Decker threat for the moment. Possibly a call over the radio from Blue Chief Charlie DeAngelo selling him. Billy's coming up. Better get a move on. Oh, and Brett really did put the hammer down. And he moved through the lap traffic so adroitly. Decker, meanwhile, seems to again be biding his time. He sees Hearn in his sights, but he's not really in a hurry to catch him. Hearn, remember, won the earlier 91 lapper. Decker finished 10th in that race. And there's Decker coming under the 7-11 of John Ventura as he heads down the back straightaway. Decker looking smooth now, moving up into turn number three. And we have reached the halfway point of this race. 50 laps are complete. Brett Hearn leads the way. One man who will not the checkered is Doug Hoffman. And he's with him now. Doug Hoffman, your night ended a little early. What happened? The motor was starting to lean out. It started flattening out, going down the straightaways. It's a new motor. I didn't want to ruin it. Now, you started the race in the bottom, then you moved to the top. Which groove did you like better? Well, I think we went a little too hard on tires, and uh, I went up top to use the cushion, and that made the car feel a little bit quicker. We were able to get back to the front there, but uh, I don't know. I just I just didn't like what the way the motor felt, and I didn't want to take a chance on ruining a new engine. They put you on the spot for a prediction. Of our leaders right now, Decker and McCready are fast on the bottom. Hearn and Cozy are fast on the top. Who do you pick? I think that I think the top group's going to be a little bit quicker. So anybody that's running good on the top at the end will be the winner. Probably Hearn. Hearn leads the way right now in a battle for third and fourth on the racetrack. Bob McCready and also Frank Cozy. And I'm starting to wonder about Cozy in the ADAP number 72. He's been pushing the car the whole race long on the outside of the racetrack. Now he's moving up well, but he might be burning down those tires. And if he runs out of grip at the end of the race, this great drive to the front may mean absolutely nothing. And look at Cozy let Bob McCready inside as he tries to pass Marty Knoll. And we've got a caution, Doug. It's for last year's Rookie of the Year, Tom Borrego. Stopped on the outside of turn three and four. You know, Bob McCready is number four on the all-time win list here at Rolling Wheels as the caution flag comes up. We'll take a look at the all-time winners here at Rolling Wheels. The legend, Will Cagle, is on top. We'll be back with more on Prime Network after this. What a fitting tribute this night of racing is, and what a fantastic track. Always great wheel-to-wheel -wheel excitement here. There's a look at Frank Cozy, who once again is racing very, very strongly here at Rolling Wheels. He's got the visor down, Doug. That means we are going to go green. You see the caution lights are off and the race safe system inside the car. That caution light inside the car, the lights up when the yellow comes out. That's off, too. It's Hearn, Decker, McCready, and Cozy as they come barreling out of turn four. And Brad Hearn leads them down the front straightaway. And it looks like Frank Cozy in the ADAP car is again going to the outside. And Alan Johnson starting to poke his nose in here in the top five, coming off turn number two. There's Alan poking the wheel underneath. Alan Johnson started 24th. 
And now he's going for position number four. Here comes Allen in again. He's really coming strong on the inside. He's going to make a move on Cozy for the number four spot. Cozy is in trouble, Doug. And once again, that bad luck bug seems to have hit Frank Cozy as Allen Johnson is quick to capitalize. Cozy has a flat right rear tire. He did not go into the pits. He's trying to stay on the racetrack and keep pace to keep from going down a lap. He's hoping for a caution. There's a look at Frank Cozy. And the yellow flag has come out, so Cozy's prayers, if you will, have been answered. He'll have a chance to run back to the pits and try to get back without losing a lap. We'll see if Frank can make it as we return on Prime Network after this. Back at Rolling Wheels, there's the answer to our earlier question. Frank Cozy appears to be out for the evening. That's going to be good news for the drivers in the top five, especially Brett Hearn. I'm sure Hearn was finding out that Cozy was moving rather quickly towards the spot he has, which is, of course, the number one position. About two-thirds of the way through, Brett Hearn continues to lead. Then it's Billy Decker, Bob McCready, and Alan Johnson in fourth. And Allen is having a great ride in the Countryside Oil Company number 25. That is the number one car of the two cars that Howie Finch brought with him tonight. So apparently some pretty close ties that Brown to wind up with somebody else's top ride. And we should point out again, this is a small block car in a big block modified race. And again, Allen has been biding his time, just picking up positions when he feels it's necessary. We're getting down to the point now, we're almost to the 70 lap mark of this race, Doug, where these drivers have got to start thinking, when am I going to start my move towards the front, and do I have enough left to get to the front? And Allen Johnson, who is the winningest active driver here at Rolling Wheels and four-time track champion, is making the move on last year's defending track champion at Rolling Wheels, Bob McCormick. And McCready and Allen are very good friends. They run together about 100 times a year, sometimes four or five times a week on both dirt and pavement. You get to know each other pretty well. And Bob and Allen get along great. But on the racetrack, well, the friendship kind of stops, and it's one man against the other. How similar are these two drivers in race strategy? Well, McCready tends to kind of hang back and be very quiet about what he's going to do. Allen is a little bit different. With Allen, you pretty much know what he's up to on the racetrack at all times. And even off the racetrack, before a race, he's pretty open about what his strategy is going to be. McCready in third place. Alan Johnson in fourth. And moving back now, that is Mike Colston in the number five position. He's passing Howie Finch, of all people. We were just mentioning a moment ago, going into one and two. Mike Colston, a guy that is the defending track champion from the five-mile point speedway, a tight quarter-mile bull ring in the southern tier of New York. He's doing great on the big 5.8s here. Doing very well, as a matter of fact, for a man who started way back in the early 70s driving late models. Now, Colston started way back in 11th place in this race. He's all the way up to fifth. Even though he has great success racing in the southern tier of New York, you wouldn't say he races with the big budget of a Brett Hearn or a Billy Decker. So a top 10 finish here would be most, most rewarding. And very quietly moving up through the field throughout the middle stages of the race has been another one of the quiet drivers, Kenny Tremont. He's in the black number 115. He's now moved up into the seventh spot behind Mike Rickey, who's running in sixth. Rickey also a very quiet guy. Neither one of these guys will set the world on fire on the racetrack, but don't be surprised if they wind up at the front towards the end. Once again, some more good wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing for position on the racetrack. And Tremont now is trying to figure out how he's going to get by Ricky. The clock is ticking. The laps are running out. And Tremont wants to have a shot at the victory. There's about 25 laps to go. He's got to get around Ricky and keep going forward. And here's a look at one more competitor who's making a move on the race course, and that's Bob McCready closing the gap on Billy Decker in the battle for second. It looks like McCready has made up his mind. He wants to start his charge to the front. Now you can see we've got 20 laps to go, and the Freightliner number six of Hearn is about a half a straight away in front of these two drivers. Now, meanwhile, you can see why Bob McCready is so popular to these fans. He is a hard charger on the racetrack. He's been the A-plus most popular driver for three years running. In fact, he's the only man to ever win that award via fan balloting. And McCready almost got knocked out of the race about a half a lap ago in turn number three coming around Marty Knoll's car. Knoll drifted high in the quarter. McCready did not expect and almost wound up on the outside of the third turn. 
So we continue to watch the battle between second place and third place runners, Billy Decker and Bob McCready. Decker in a family operation, his brother Kenny is the crew chief, and he's showing well here this evening. And McCready, uh, right behind him in the Syracuse Frame Service car number nine, is also a lower budget operation. You still see him towing to the races with the open trailer, whereas a lot of these guys have graduated to the enclosed trailers. Trying to get him on the outside did Bob McCready, but once again, Billy Decker closed the door, and we have wheel-to-wheel -wheel action once again in the battle for second place. And they're coming up on the guy that started in the fourth row, Todd Burley in the 88, and there goes McCready down the front stretch. Nice power move to take over the runner-up spot. This with 17 laps to go. Bob McCready has second place, but here comes Billy Decker. Decker is going to get caught behind the slower car of Burley, but McCready ducks in behind Burley and cuts off Decker. Decker had to get out of the throttle or catch McCready's back end. And there's Alan Johnson continuing to run strong in that pickup ride from Howie Finch. We're getting to what people would call crunch time if this was rush hour. It's put up or shut up time. The drivers have got to get to the front now. They've got to try to catch Hearn before they run out of time. And as Hearn continues to lead, there's a battle for third and fourth. Billy Decker and Alan Johnson. And Alan Johnson is flying on the racetrack. And Johnson's going to duck down low. He's going to try to get by both Decker and the slower car of Burley. He gets by one, but not the other. Now he's caught behind Burley. They're side by side going into turn number one. Alan Johnson, four-time track champion, gets Decker. He's got third place. He almost also got the back end of Burley's car. He had to really do what they call a squeeze play out there on the racetrack. Decker trying to come back on the inside. Whoa, real close there in the corner. Charging Alan Johnson has third place, and now he tries to set his sights on Bob McCready. But continuing to lead this race is Brett Hearn. And the Freightliner number six has performed flawlessly for Hearn tonight. He won the 91 lap feature event here at Rolling Wheels earlier on. Now, with the track conditions completely different, he and the crew have made the proper setup. He's leading by a comfortable margin with just 12 laps left to go. Brett started sixth. He moved up to the front spot very early on in the race, and he's been leading all night long. And we've got a car in trouble on the front straightaway. It is the Z car of Butch Tittle bringing out a caution flag. He's got a flat right rear tire, and he's ducking into the pits. This is a great break for Bob McCready, the man in second. He's also the man falling into the dirt spotlight. Can Barefoot Bob catch Brett the Jet? We'll find out on Prime Network. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 90 down, 10 to go. Brett Hearn in command. Bob McCready a solid second. But the real story of the race, Alan Johnson, a pickup ride. Howie Finch's small block number 25. Allen's got the car into third place. That's after starting 24th. The leader continues to be Brett Hearn and how he must love running on the dirt circuit. We mentioned this is one of his favorite tracks. Well, last year alone, Brett Hearn pocketed $350,000 in winnings on the dirt circuit. And the great liner number six has been running smoothly all night. He's been saving up the tires. He may have the best chance of anyone in this field of winning this race tonight, even though he's led almost the entire distance. Meanwhile, Bob McCready got a big break with that yellow caution, and he's right on the bumper of Brett Hearn. Let's see how it winds down. Now, both Kern and McCready are very good on hard slick racetracks like this. Kern, in particular, his home track, the Orange County Fair Speedway down in Middletown, New York, the surface is very similar to this, hard and slick. It's very easy for him to set up for the wheels when it's like this, based on his past experience. Look at Steve Payne. He's gotten by Billy Decker. Payne, we've been following him. He's been ducking in and out of the pits all night, but he hasn't lost a lap, and that pass puts him into the number four position. Number one continues to be Brett Hearn. There's Bob McCready, and you see the interval as they deal off turn four. I think things might pretty much stay the way they are right now. Hearn's car very smooth into the corners. You notice he's trying not to slide the car. He's trying not to burn the tires off. The object is to keep the car moving forward at all times. And we're nearing the point where there are five laps remaining in this event. And Bob McCready still looks to be running strong, but can he catch Brett the Jet? We go back now to a battle for the number six, seven, and eight positions. Here comes Kenny Tremont. That's that black and white 115. He's ducked it down to the inside of Mike Rickey, and Tremont owns the number seven spot. Colston with a wonderful ride here this evening continues to go six. Kenny Tremont gaining ground. 
both these drivers are caught up in lap traffic. I don't think they're going to be in contention. We've got a car trouble. It's Billy Decker. Decker, who is running up there in the top five all race long, stopped on the outside of the back straightaway with the wheels number 91. A tough break for a man who won a race here at Rolling Wheels back in 1988. He's been kind of a king of 200 lap races. He also has a pair of 200 lap feature wins at Lebanon Valley to his credit. And Doug, there's the culprit, a flat right rear tire. Kind of a recurring theme tonight. And another leading contender to the crown, which looks to be held right now by Brett Hearn, goes by the wayside with a blown right rear tire. And Billy Decker heads into the pits. It seemed to me, Paul, that he wasn't running that hard on the race course. seemed to be saving his tires. Exactly. And if he was saving his tires and wound up losing a tire, you have to wonder about the drivers that are left on the racetrack. Are their tires going to hold up in the final few laps of this race? Well, Andy Fusco is down at Billy Decker's pit. Let's see exactly how bad the tire situation is. Well, if there was a story for misfortune for the front runners tonight, it's tires, specifically right rear tires. Billy Decker, the victim of a flat right rear, and this tire is absolutely destroyed. It's as smooth as an asphalt slick. Now, remember, under the dirt rules, the last three laps have to be under green. So the fact it's 97 down and the cars are still running doesn't matter. These caution laps don't count. Back up to you, Doug and Paul. Wrap it up. And it's going to be a dash for the cash. Hearn leads, but Bob McCready is making his presence known to the jet. Can McCready take Hearn? Here's how Bob sizes up the situation. You've already found their weak points where your strong points are. You just try to exploit that as much as you possibly can. You aren't going to psych out Jack Johnson or Allen or Danny or, uh, you know, Dave Lape. You go on forever. You don't psych those guys out. They're, they're, they're professionals. They know what they're doing. They're doing their deal. If you're faster than them, generally you can, you can win the race. If you're not faster than them, you generally follow. <laughs> Couldn't help but notice, Paul, that Bob McCree didn't mention Brett Hearn, who takes the green flag and gets a tremendous jump to start this final three laps. I'll bet you that's probably because Hearn's the man in front of him right now. And you are right. Hearn got a tremendous start. That was the key he needed. This is a three-lap sprint. The chances of a caution are not that great. And Hearn really did what he had to do. He saw the green, put his foot down, and hope the tires gripped. And boy, they sure did. Two laps to go. Hearn leads the way. Then it's barefoot Bob McCready, Alan Johnson, and Hurricane Steve Payne. And I'm noticing a little smoke coming out of the back of the Freightliner number six of Hearn. McCready is starting to reel him in. Tire wear a big factor and let's see if Brett Hearn can sustain the last lap and a half. Off turn four, white flag left. And the key there, Hearn came off the corner a lot smoother than McCready as they now work into turn number one. McCready having to fight the car. There's that smoke again coming out of the back of the Hearn number six. A nice comfortable cushion for Brett Hearn if his tires can hold. Into turn three, down low in turn four. Here comes Brett Hearn. He's got the lead. And the checkered flag is out. Brett Hearn, the winner of the Robert N. Petrucci Memorial 100 lapper at Rolling Wheels. McCready crossing the line for second. Ellen Judson comes through in the number three spot. What an extraordinary night of racing for this man. Behind the number six, Brett Hearn. We'll talk with our race winner when we return on Prime Network after this. Brett Hearn, the winner of our Robert N. Petrocci Memorial 100 lapper at Rolling Wheels Raceway. He took the lead on lap number three, and he led the race the rest of the way. Another great win for Brett the Jet. He's in victory lane. Brett Hearn, you were fast in the top of the track in the beginning, fast in the middle during the middle, and fast at the bottom at the end. You get the idea this Freightliner 6 would go anywhere you wanted it to. Well, just about. Uh, we spent most of the race trying to find out where the car was, was going to be the fastest. And... Uh, I was real concerned about the tires because anytime you start out a 100 lap race with uh, and you're that quick in the beginning, you're usually in trouble because it usually means you're going to slow down as the race goes on. But uh, in this case, uh, we were able to hang on. We wore the right rear tire out and it was a major concern most of the race, but uh, we managed to stay there till the end. You're used to hard, abrasive tracks. You race at Orange County every Saturday night. Did that give you an edge when the track came up like it did tonight? I think it did. Uh, this is a very close to a Middletown surface tonight. In a long race, you seem to use the radios a lot. 
Well, we use the radios mainly to find out where our fastest groove is because this is the kind of track that the groove moves around on a lot. And uh, we want to find a combination of grooves in the track, either low and high or, or all low or whatever. And uh, they use the stopwatch and the radio to tell me where my fastest groove is as the race progresses. So it kind of keeps us you know, a little bit ahead of the, of the pack there. It was a long day, tough on machine, man, and components. The components are wore out. The machine looks in pretty good shape. How's the man? I'm a little tired, actually. I think I could use a little rest on the way home. And following Greta Claus in second, of course, Bob McGrady, followed by Alan Johnson, Steve Payne, Mike Colston, Kenny Tremont, Mike Ricky, a surprising Ted Lamb Jr. finishing in eighth, Jeff Hetzler, and Sean George. Andy's with Barefoot Bob. Only wheels is usually a little tackier, a little wetter than it came up tonight. Did it surprise the hometown guys? Well, I think that's why Brett sh shined a little bit. It's more of a middle town surface tonight. You know, it's uh, a little different than what we're used to here, but uh, hey, it's the same for everybody.